We went to uh, Lou Costello's office, which was on Sunset Boulevard and had just been newly decorated. And I remembered, uh, I realized that all the books were green, which conformed, the covers of all the books conformed to the design and color uh, coordination of the room. Um, and he said, I'm sorry, I have to excuse myself, but my bodyguard is looking for Bud's bodyguard and they're out to kill each other. And so we'll have this meeting as soon as I get back, if I get back. And, and we left. At that time, each of them had a bodyguard to protect them. And uh, the two bodyguards had gotten in a fight and gone home for their guns. And uh, so it was, and I, uh, I have to say it's indelibly etched, but requires some recall. I must have wanted to block it out of my memory. Anyway, he came back. And by then we had found the green books were, uh, we had taken the liberty of removing from our show, were classics. The designer just covered them with uh, uh, green bound leather. Um, we started with that show and the show was uh, virtually divided in half. Uh, the first half of the show was um, standard vaudeville routines they recreated. And then we were to do the new part of the show, and it became increasingly different, uh, difficult to just start a storyline, have 12 minutes in which to end it. So we started to uh, do elaborate sketches, uh, which didn't require as much uh, a story, uh, of a storyline. And we did one which was a spoof of Sam Spade. Uh, radio at that time, you could use almost a uh, mono syllabic voice over technique. Uh, I came into the office. I crossed to my desk. Uh, and uh, I sat down in, in the chair and thought. And so we did that for Lou Costello as Sam Spade, and we'd use sound effects. I, I remember one thing. I sat down in the chair. I threw my feet up on the desk. There was a crash. He said, I missed. And uh, he fell in love with that character, and for the rest of that season, that's all we did with Sam Spade routines. We were put under contract at Universal, and those were remarkable days. There were many people opposed to the studio system, but I think it was very beneficial for writers, and um, I wish they had worked out the inequities of the system and it still remained, because you were assigned a movie, you knew who the stars were, you wrote for them. You knew it was going to be made unless you screwed it up. And so what a, 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 an enticing and a, a inspiring atmosphere. I will tell you something that is interesting historically. You may or may not know this. But I didn't know it at the time. Uh, in Burlesque, where Abbott and Girls came from, it was much harder to find a gifted straight man than a comedian. So the straight man was paid more than the comedian. And it was Bud Abbott who hired Lou Costello to work with him. And unfortunately, it wasn't a 50-50 relationship. And that inequity uh, disturbed Costello. And in the later years, he reversed it so that he got more money than Bud. Uh, because on the television screen, it seemed like you uh, don't need uh, a, a, any specific straight man. You can replace them. Uh, time we came along, Abbott and Costello were not as meticulous in their timing as they had been when uh, when we first started. I, uh, when they first started, I don't think they liked each other. Uh, the relationship had soured. Uh, the joy of performing together had dissipated. Uh, they played card games in which they actually tried to break each other uh, and would reluctantly go to the set uh, to perform. 